Leaders are readers is something that I've always heard, something that I've always believed, but I definitely put it into practice in 2019, and I really believe that my life is better because of it, my church's life is better because of it. So I wanna create a video, the top 20 books you need to read in 2020. Of course, if you've read some of those, then don't read it. But these were my favorite 20 books of 2019. Hello everyone, my name is Trey Van Camp. If you're new to this channel, everything I do on this channel is I document my journey as a church planter and a family man. And honestly, what I'm trying to do is to remind myself and you as well that Jesus offers us a better way to life and he offers us a better way to lead. And so what I wanna do for this top 20 list is I wanna talk about those two categories. I wanna start out with how Jesus offers us a better way to lead and my 10 favorite books that you should read in 2020 to help you in your leadership. One precursor are here. This is not a book review. I'm going to give you just enough to where you're going to want to go buy it. And if you have more questions, comment down below. I would love to interact with you about any of these books. And I'd also love for you to comment down below your favorite book of 2019 that I should read in 2020. The first book on leadership is The Second Mountain by David Brooks. I literally just made a video about this, so I won't dive into it too much, but I think it's really helpful for us as leaders to first of all, lead in the second half of our spiritual life and also realize so much of our leadership is to pull people through the first mountain and to the the second. The second book of leadership, I'm counting this in the leadership category because I think this is a great book to lead your people through. It's called The Common Rule. Uh, 2019, a big category that I love to read about and has changed my life is habits. And what he does is so helpful. He helps you and the people that you lead in your congregation, both daily habits and weekly habits of loving God and loving others. It's incredible. Justin, you're a good guy. Invitation to a Journey was a game changer for me in helping lead my people through the process of the spiritual life. This introduced to me the stages of Christianity, which I have a video about that in my workshop. What I love most about this book is I realized that I need to lead people differently. Some people need to be more encouraged to, to operate in silence. Others need to be more encouraged to read longer every day to get closer to God. We're all different and we need to tap into that. This book is Learning from a Legend. It's about Gardner C. Taylor and it's kind of a biography, but also some lessons we can learn from him in leadership, mainly communication. And I'm just blown away by this preacher. He was an incredible guy. When we think of Prince of Preachers, we think of people like Charles Spurgeon, Billy Graham. We need to add Gardner C. Taylor to that list. If you honestly start reading a lot and learning these things, one book you'll have to read to kind of give you some dose of humility is the book Accidental Pharisees. What I loved about this book is when God starts to move in our lives, we start to think we are now the best, which is the exact problem the Pharisees had. The Pharisees actually started out as a really legitimate group of people who just loved the Bible, but it led to all sorts of bad places. And you and I have no idea how often we can lean into that self-righteousness. And uh, this was just a good primer to remind me of my leadership. Don't do that. I think my favorite leadership book out of all of these was A Failure of Nerve. By the way, none of this is in a certain order. A Failure of Nerve is incredible. It really made me, I actually made a video about this one as well, so I won't spend too much time on it. But in an age of anxiety, we need to learn how to not fake it till you make it, but honestly have a non-anxious presence in this culture. And that is what this world needs. Although I never met him, I often say Eric Mason is my pastor because I love listening to him on podcasts, but he wrote a book called Woke Church. Absolutely love this book. Honestly, as pastors and Christian leaders in general, as Christians in general, we need to have more talks about being multicultural and what that means. And it was really helpful for me as a leader to be able to put into words how we as a church to stand up against racism and injustice. How to Not Be Secular, I made another video about this. These will all be linked down below, but this book is incredible. It helped me realize as a leader what our people are thinking, what our, my neighbor is thinking. Uh, James K.A. Smith has grown to be one of my favorite authors especially in 2019, I think you should check him out in 2020. Another favorite author of mine that I had no idea he was this much of a legend is Eugene Peterson. I wanted to put all of Eugene's book, but this one that made the biggest difference in my life and my leadership is The Contemplative Pastor or The Contemplative Pastor. It was just a great reminder of what my leadership should honestly look like as a pastor, as a Christian leader, and I think it was just a breath of fresh air. Ironically, this book is fading, but it's called Reappearing Church. I love this book because as a leader, it helped me realize the process, the steps that we need to take 
to honestly bring renewal, uh, what often people call a revival, back to our area and it gave me a lot of hope, a lot of handlebars on how as a leader I can lead people towards that direction. But of course, all of this is up to the Spirit of God doing what only He can do. I'm gonna give a quick break to this video to say thank you to Logos Bible Software for sponsoring this video. Honestly, I love books and Logos Bible Software has so many and honestly what I appreciate the most is their huge library of commentaries and things like that because I'm reading a lot of books but now my space for commentaries I don't know where to put them. Thankfully, I can just have everything digitally on Logos. I love getting real books for the type of books I'm talking about, but especially commentaries and Greek study and Hebrew and all that. Logos is a game changer. Um, honestly, I get some kickback if you ever use my code. So use Tray8 and you will get huge percentages off of your purchase. Um, I think they're huge, I don't know. So that's a quick plug, uh, don't hate me. Let's go back to the rest of the video. Now let's talk about 10 books, 10 of my favorite books, that really addresses how Jesus offers us a better way to life. I think a great way to start out is Keeping the Sabbath Holy by Marva J. Don. 2019, I learned that I was a workaholic, especially in the YouTube world. I was uploading video after video after video, and my life has dramatically slowed down, and honestly, I'm happier and healthier because of it, and it's I'm gonna blame this book for it. Sabbath is a forgotten practice that we should bring back in style. And another book that I think is so helpful to remember is The Love of God. And so Surrender to Love by David Benner. It was incredible. Just the way he talked about how loving God is, I just, I left just loving God even more and knowing that he loves me. And I realized that that is a doctrine you can never graduate from. There is so much to learn about the love of God. Another James K.A. Smith book is You Are What You Love. This actually made me realize the parts of my life that I wasn't surrendering over to Jesus. And so often we think you are what you think, but it's much, much deeper than that. And so he really taps into our desires and how we can tap into those desires. And so much of it is what we do with our bodies, the way we form ourselves through so many different practices. This book was a game changer. This should be one of the first ones you read. I just walked away loving Jesus more because of this book, Eternity is Now in Session. I just walked away being so grateful for what God has done for me on the cross and the resurrection. This book was released in October of this year. John Mark Comer has been one of my favorite pastors uh, to follow and listen to in his book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, coined uh, by a phrase from Dallas Willard. I love this book. I think there's obviously other books out there that are similar to it, but I love his voice. I love uh, just his influence on my generation, and I think this is a great book if you are just exhausted, if you don't believe that Jesus' yoke is easy and his burden is light, that he's full of rest, get this book fast, even though you should probably be slow about it because it's... When I was nearing burnout at the beginning of 2019, this book helped my life so much. It's actually, the title is about leadership, but I think it's about your own life, right? Strengthening the Soul of Your Leadership by Ruth Haley Barton. This is so good if you're just feeling tired and you just need to be loved by God and you need to learn new rhythms in your life. Start with that book, incredible book. As a preacher, I think I've always downplayed emotions and I honestly, I think it's just because I haven't fully understood emotions and what they play when it comes to truth and just living your own life. And I thought this book was so great for me. It's called Why Emotions Matter, Recognizing Your Body Signals, Growing in Emotional Intelligence, and Discovering an Embodied Spirituality. Oh my goodness, I have to preach on this in 2020. So these last three are my favorite three of all time in 2019. And I know you've already, I've already told you you should start with this, but these are the three I think you need to start with. Let's start with Soul Keeping. I believe this is a huge book. It's such a beautiful book about how your heart and head and gut, they all go together. I just could not stop reading it and it's definitely going to be a reread for me in 2020. I love this book, this next one, because it actually developed a mentor relationship. Um, it's called Mansions of the Heart by Thomas Ashbrook. I kind of talked about this in one of my entrepreneur talks, links in the description, but it gave me hope. It talks about how there's actually seven mansions of the Christian life and there's just so much growth and honestly, most of us, because of the way we preach and read our Bibles, we get stuck at Mansion 3 and think that's all God has for us. So if you feel like you're stuck, you feel like I already know this Christian life, I'm kind of hitting a rut, this is boring, I guess all my life now is just about other people, that's kind of true, but this book is so helpful in making you realize there is so much more. It's been life-giving to my soul. And the author, I hit up and He's now my spiritual director and I just talked to him yesterday and he had me in a puddle of tears. He's an amazing man. Praise God for him. Like the best decision I made in 2019. And the last book 
I got on ebook. It was against all my morals. I had no money at that time, had no idea how great it would be. It actually started my adventure into the great author Dallas Willard and it's called Renovation of the Heart. It is much like soul keeping. Honestly, if you're somebody who uh, is not deep into the world of theology, start with soul keeping. Uh, renovation of the heart is a little bit trickier, but it actually gets deeper into that about your mind and your will and your emotions and all these things tying together as your soul and how you can nurture all of those things. It has been life giving to my soul. I told myself it's going to be the first book I read every year. I don't know how long that will last, but I'm definitely doing that. January 1st, 2020, I am starting again and I'm going to go buy the actual copy this time, Renovation of the heart. You're gonna love it. I promise, you're gonna love it. And that is my list for 2020. Let me know in the comments down below what you think I should have added to that list. If there's any book in here that you enjoyed and why you enjoyed it. If you're a fellow book nerd, shout out to you. I hope you guys have a great 2020. I hope that you subscribe and join me in this journey and I hopefully can bring you along and just helping remind you, give you some joy in life and some confidence for the fact that Jesus offers us a better way to life and Jesus offers us a better way to lead. All right, see you soon.